Welcome to another useful DIY video. Once you have learned it, it can benefit the rest of your life. This time, we are talking about how to install dash cam for your car, and I want to focus on hardwired parking recording. But before doing that, I always love to show my friends what I see when I'm driving. Whoa, 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 whoa. This was captured on the highway last year. Drive safe, everyone! For people who drive a Tesla, I guess you don't have to watch this. But for the rest of you, you may want to invest on the dash cam. I will show it to you on how I did it on my Honda Richline, but the same principle can apply to all other vehicles. Most people who buy a dash cam never pay attention to one specification, voltage. There are two types of dash cams on the market. The first one is 5 volt, which is usually USB friendly. The other one is 12 or 24 volt, which can be hardwired directly to your car, and they may come with a parking mode. I had this dash cam called Papago 30G a couple of years ago. It's very, very old. I don't recommend this. It's 5 volt, as you can see. You can power this thing using a portable USB battery pack. Here is the DIY tips of the day. USB dash cam is good for traveling. It's handy when you go out of country for car rental. I used this when I was in Japan two years ago. If you turn off the screen, it can last for four hours. Sometimes you want to capture amazing video like this one. Driving your car on the bridge across the river without guardrail. Next question is, can I hardwire the 5 volt dash cam for parking? The answer is yes, but you do need to have a power management protection system to prevent your battery from discharging. Otherwise, you won't be able to start your car again. Now, I had this product from my old car. This is not a new technology, but let me show you how it works. I am using a transformer to emulate the 12 volt battery. There are three wires. Red color wires goes to the ACC, yellow color goes to the battery. In this demonstration, I wire both red and yellow to the positive terminal of the transformer. The black wire goes to the ground and is connected to the negative. Let's start the car by connecting the red wire to the positive terminal using the alligator clip. As you can see here, we have 14 volt. Wait for a couple of seconds, the dash cam will start. There are a couple of settings you can adjust. The power cutoff voltage is very important. You can set it according to your preference. A fully charged battery is 12.6 volt, so 12.0 is a good start. I would avoid going lower than 12. You can also set the temperature cutoff point to prevent overheating in summertime. Of course, there is a duration setting. It would be amazing if your car battery can last for 72 hours. Okay, we cut the power by removing the red color alligator clip. Now, the yellow color wire is providing all the power to the dash cam. The dash cam will continue to run until the voltage drops to a certain point, which we set it earlier to 12.0 volt. The power management system will cut it off when the voltage drops. Let's do it. I am adjusting the voltage to 3 volt. As you can see, the dash cam is shutting down, so your battery will not be completely drained. Let's start the car again by adjusting the voltage and reconnect the alligator clip. There you go, I think you got the idea. If you want to buy this particular gadget, you are out of luck. It seems like this company went out of business. I bought it from Amazon a couple of years ago. You can look for other products. Here are two keywords. Just GFGI please. There are pros and cons using external power management device. It works with your existing dash cams for sure. However, it cannot switch your dash cam to parking mode. Ideally, time lapse or motion detection is preferred when your car is parked. You don't really need 30 or 60 frames per second because not only it drains your battery, but it also fills up your memory card too fast. Let's move on and talk about 12 volt dash cam. This brand, Thinkware, is from South Korea. And similar to K-pop, their style is pretty hot. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with a black pink or jenny red edition. Many of their dash cams are ready for hardwired. 
Now, this particular model I am going to show you is pretty old. I don't recommend this. Look for newer models. I have installed this on my vehicle for more than three years. The first step you need is to look for the fuse box information for your vehicle. It's very easy to find on the internet. What you're looking for is the diagram of the fuse box inside of your car. For Honda Richline, Accord, Civic, Pilot, Passport, CRV, they are very similar. You need to look for two items in the table. The first one is the fuse that gives you power only when you start the car. The second one is the one that gives you power even your engine is not running. For me, there is a blank one here, number 30. I am going to use it for ACC, which is the first one. If you don't have a blank one like I do, just pick one using your common sense. For example, number 5 here is the ACC socket. That sounds like a good candidate. The second one I chose is number 15 for the driver's side power seat. By design, you can adjust your seat before you start the car. This will always give you power. Look at the diagram and get your head under the dashboard. That's how you locate the fuse. If you look at Thinkware official document, they are telling you to do this. Uh, I don't recommend this, honestly. What I recommend is to get a fuse tab. For my vehicle, I need to get the low profile mini fuse tab. I got it from Princess Auto. You can get it from your local automotive supply store. Yes, I also need mini fuse. 5 amp is good enough. I have two of this. The top one goes to the ACC, which is number 30. The bottom one goes to the power seat, which is number 15. The original fuse for the power seat was 20 amp. We took that fuse out and put it here. So it will protect two circuits separately. To install this like a pro, run the wire along the head liner, remove the rubber stripping on the A-pillar, then hide the wire just like this, all the way down to the fuse panel under the dashboard. First, we are installing the black color ground wire. I am attaching it using a new screw to an existing hole on the metal. Then, we secure it using a socket wrench. Next, we plug and play the fuse tap back to the panel, one at a time. The 20 amp I showed you earlier goes in here. And, of course, the other one goes to the top. Very simple. Parking recording will now start. Alright, everything is working as expected. If you have seen my videos before, you know what I am going to do. Yes, tidy up using my favorite zip ties. Because you want to make the installation looks like a pro. For the camera at the back, run the cable along the floor and all the way up to the C pillar. Open the plastic cover right next to the rubber stripping. Yes, amazingly, there is enough space to hide the extra cable. As you can see, the power management system is built right inside of the dash cam. You can set the cutoff voltage for the parking mode. Of course, there is a duration settings from 2 hours to 48 hours. For the recording settings, you can either choose motion detection or time lapse. I prefer the later one. Here are some footages. They are pretty decent even in time lapse mode. Quality is not the best, honestly. You can only read the license plate when the car is very close to you. That is true for both time lapse and continuous recording, but generally speaking, it's acceptable. As I have promised you earlier, here is another footage captured by the dash cam in my wife's car. <coughs> Ouch, that hurts. No wonder why we have a TV show called Canada's Worst Driver. Now, look at this guy. What the hell is he doing in my lane? He is supposed to be on the other side. Oh my god.
I hope you enjoyed this. My goal is to inspire more people into DIY and home improvement projects. Give this a thumbs up if you find some good information in this video. You may also want to check out other videos on my channel. I am pretty sure you would love them. Remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.